Good morning. My name is Lynn Smith, and I would like to welcome you to the service of worship at Emmanuel Baptist Church. This Sunday is the one the council normally takes between Christmas and New Year's to give our staff and pastors a bit of a break after the Christmas season. This year, we have been given a gift from uh, Canadian Baptist Ministries of a service completely done for us. We will have a message uh, from Dr. Jonathan Wilson, who is a retired professor from Cary Theological College in Vancouver. He's also a personal friend of our Jonathan, as they work together with the Africa Lead Leadership Exchange, uh, which is one of CBM's uh, projects. As well, we will hear stories of some of the missions that we support through uh, Canadian Baptist Ministries. Uh, we will also have um, an opportunity to meet Jennifer Lau, who is the new executive director of CBM. And we will enjoy worshiping together in word and song. And so now let us prepare to worship together as Judy plays the prelude. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Jennifer Lau. I'm the Executive Director of CBM. Welcome, and thank you for being part of this special service in which we will spend the next few minutes together rejoicing during this Christmas season. Together we celebrate that despite the weariness of the world, particularly in a year such as this, Christ is alive and working to transform lives every day. As God's mission people, what a gift it is to be part of that work. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens and praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For at his command, they were created and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children, 
let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Oh God, we do thank you for being such a good and faithful God. And despite the challenging times in which we're living in, we know, God, that you are very present and you are in control. So, Father, we ask that you would make us faithful to the calling that you have given us to be your servants. Help us to be your hands and your feet, to bring light into places of darkness. We give you thanks, God, for your goodness. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is David Snowball, and I've been asked to do the children's moment, children's prayer this morning. I'm so happy to be with you. I hope you've all had a good Christmas. Um, as we approach this day, we came through the Christmas season. We lit candles along the way, Advent candles. One was for faith, another for hope, another for love, and finally one for peace. But a couple of days ago, we celebrated Christmas, and that was the day when the true light came into the world. Here we are, we're living in a time of darkness, really, with this awful COVID disease, but we do have Christ as the light moving forth. Now let me just 
bow our heads. Please bow your heads with me and we'll say a short prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you've come into our world as the light amidst all the darkness that some of us are experiencing. And Father, we do especially now think of the, our friends that we haven't seen for quite a while. We just pray that you'll be a blessing on them, their families, our own families. We know that we're hopeful. We know that you're in control and will soon your light will shine brighter and there will be no longer any darkness that we will see our friends again. And we thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, amen. We have been celebrating the coming of light. John tells that story in his nativity story. We are familiar with the nativity stories in Matthew and Luke, and those are the ones that we usually perform or remember from Christmas. But John also tells a Christmas story from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that light, life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the light of the world that has come to us in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came as the Word made flesh. He came as the light to shine in the darkness, to shine a light, to reveal to us the brokenness of our world, the brokenness of our relationship with God, with other human beings, with the rest of creation, and with ourselves. But he didn't come just to show that to us, reveal it to us. He came to heal all of that. The one who, through whom all things were made, came in order to shine a light on all things and bring them back into relationships for which we are created. Relationship with God, with one another, with creation, and with ourselves. Jesus did that by being the Word made flesh who in his body was crucified on the cross. That's how he brought healing to this broken world. And his light shines from the cross. That's a strange light, isn't it? A light that shines from the cross. But it does so to reveal our brokenness and God's love for this broken world and God's healing, reconciling power through Jesus Christ. Paul tells us that all things are reconciled to God through his blood shed on the cross. The word became flesh so that in his body he would die on the cross. He made his dwelling with us and journeyed with us even to death. But his death was different from all other deaths because it is the light of the world that shines from the cross. The light shines in the darkness. This has been a dark year, hasn't it? The entire world has known the darkness of the COVID-19 pandemic, but there have been many other sources of darkness as well. And for some people, 
their lives were lived in the darkness of brokenness, of suffering, of pain, of alienation, even before the pandemic set in. The light shines in the darkness. Yes, we live in darkness. And this next year may be an even darker year. There may be darker years yet to come, but the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We know that in him is life and that life that is the light of the world could not be overcome by death. In the midst of our lives in the darkness, we also know that the light is coming again. We are waiting for the second coming of that light. And John tells us about that as well. In the first chapter of the Revelation that's given to him, in the book of Revelation, John tells us, says this, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sh sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades. When the light came the first time, it came to die on the cross. It came in the midst of darkness. And there's a strange kind of glory, isn't there, in a light shining from the cross. As the life of the world hung on that cross, it seems that death had won. And for three hours, deep darkness fell upon the earth. Most certainly the deepest darkness the world has ever known. And the light of the world was placed in the utter darkness of a tomb. Death and suffering and violence seem to have had the last word. But on the third day, on the third day, the light broke forth from the tomb and it shined once again into the world. Darkness cannot overcome light or extinguish it. Death cannot overcome life. The life that is the life of all the world could not be held by death. Death could not hold its prey. And that light that continues to shine in the midst of darkness today is coming again. John's vision that begins in chapter 1 of the book of Revelation and ends in chapter 22 of the book of Revelation tells us that when the light comes again, it will not come to shine in the darkness. It will come to obliterate the darkness in our lives. It will come to obliterate the darkness that alienates us from God, from one another, 
from the rest of creation and from ourselves. It will come to expose the sin that has broken us. It will come to drive out the darkness and death will be no more. And there will be no more mourning, sorrowing, crying or pain because the old order of things will have passed away. The light is coming again to reorder all that was made through him. The light is coming again in order to bring healing to all that is broken. The light comes again to obliterate the darkness, not creation. The light comes again to make all things new, not to make all new things. The light of the world that is also the life of the world through whom all things are made will come to reclaim all that he has made and to make it new. We are God's people. We walk in this light in the midst of darkness. We know the light of the world and we see the world in that light. So we know the brokenness, the sorrow, the pain and the suffering. We know the presence of death, but we know that none of those things is the last word. We know how the story ends. And even now, we are living in that story as we walk in the light. May we be people of light who shine God's light in the darkness so that others may see what we have seen. This is our mission, to be light, to bear witness to that light, to live in such a way that the light shines out from us so that others are drawn to that light. As we walk in the light, in the midst of the darkness, may we have faith to know this reality. May we have hope to live in light of this future reality. And may we love God and our neighbors and ourselves and the rest of creation because we have been set free by the light from the anxieties, the fears, and the alienation that has broken this world. May we be people who bring healing to this broken world. May we walk in the light of the Lamb. Let us pray. O oh God, would you please light in us the lamp of love that never goes out because of the presence of your Holy Spirit. And may we shine that light in every part of our lives, in every corner of this world as your people, so that others may see your light and may see their lives and their world in that light and be drawn to it and be drawn to the redemption, the salvation that has been made real in the word made flesh, crucified, risen, and coming again. May it be so, Lord Jesus. Amen.
here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. At your invitation, Jesus, Holy God, we join our hearts in prayer. And Lord, we still are imagining that light in the darkness. And we thank you for the psalmist who can describe it as both that flame of the candle and the floodlight of the lamp. Lord, we thank you for meeting us in our place where each of us is. And Lord, we do lift up our burdens to you at this time, be it of loneliness, be it of the pain of loss, be it of the fatigue of sickness. We rest in your hope. We rest in the embrace of your love, for it is assured, and we thank you for the comfort. As we anticipate the day of joining together in worship in the sanctuary, meeting face to face, we are thankful for the virtual alternatives and ask your blessing on each member of the tech team who so cheerfully gives of their time, effort, and resources to make the audio sync, to make the broadcast happen. Lord, continue to bring fruit to their efforts that your word of hope would be known throughout this community. Uh, Lord, we look to celebrate the new year, and thank you, Father God, for blessing Emmanuel, and ask that you would make this church a blessing to others. And we think particularly of the second language Iranian Emmanuel Church amongst us. We thank you for the witness and the ministry of Pastor Saeed and Mary Ann, and ask that you would bless them with guidance and provision according to your riches in glory. From everlasting to everlasting, we praise the Lord and rest in his forgiveness and faithfulness. For we pray all things in the name of Jesus, who is worthy of our devotion. Amen. Now we're going to hear from stories from CBM's world partners. We're going to hear something about Lebanon, with whom Emmanuel partnered uh, a number of years ago for about five years. And then we'll hear some leadership development stories from Africa, where Jonathan Mills was in fact a serving before he came to us here at Emmanuel. And in fact, that's where Jonathan met Jonathan Wilson, our speaker today. On August 4, a devastating explosion hit Beirut. Many people lost their lives and many more were injured and left homeless. Because of partners like Canadian churches, we were able to open our guest house, 
serve them, show them the love of Christ, and reach out to many more through local churches. One of the families we are helping is Dareen, a single mom for three boys. And her youngest is Jad, has severe autism and he's on a wheelchair. Um, as he was on the balcony during the blast, uh, the pressure threw him off and he, ha he grabbed with his hands on the balcony's ledge. His mom, as she stood up, was scared, ran and saved him. Uh, he was miraculously uh, saved. We had visited them um, and she couldn't believe uh, that uh, there are people who are willing to listen and pray with them and love them. Um, we had helped fix their house, but most importantly, she experienced the love of God. One day, as we had has helped uh, uh, Jad go to a special school, uh, he was dealing with his trauma. Um, uh, the mom locked herself outside the house one day and uh, uh, the door had shut. As she was waiting for Jad to come from school, he had the key. Uh, we, we did the visit on the stairs and I asked her, I said, Darin, what would you like to pray to God? And she said, I want him to fill me with his love. Uh, I want the thing that you guys have and she accepted Jesus in her heart right there on the stairs with the neighbors going up and down the stairs and it was an amazing time and they said these are the happiest days of their lives. Uh, we praise God for what, he, for what he is doing in this family's life. The next day after the blast, we decided to open our buildings for people affected by the explosion. We prepared all the rooms, assigned a phone number for people to contact us on and put an announcement on social media. People who stayed at ABTS lost their homes, and many of them were heavily injured. We provided accommodation, all necessities, including hygiene kits, and clothing, and three meals a day. We had a medical team that checked on them on a daily basis. We had another team that regularly visited them, listened to their fears, prayed for them, and provided counseling support for those who were traumatized, especially kids. Later, we helped these families in moving out by renting apartments for them or renovating their homes. We also bought them some home appliances and some furniture in order to continue their life. As you can see, the blast was devastating in Lebanon. But we're thankful that so many people have responded, prompted by God, to help bring some restoration and some healing to people in Beirut. We're thankful for partners like Canadian Baptists who have come alongside us. CBM partners with LSESD, the Lebanese Society for Education and Social Development, of which ABTS is one of the family of ministries. There are many responses to the blast uh, supported by CBM. This is only one example of our response. Thank you so much. This December, one of the CBM partners in Congo, the community of Baptist churches in Central Africa, CBCA, have been ordaining ministers, new pastors. In one month, they ordained 81 pastors, young people who are committed to serve God. We know Congo has been a place of conflict, Ebola, and now this time, uh, COVID-19 like elsewhere in the world but the church is still committed. The second story is about another denomination in the DRC Congo. This is a new CBM partner, the community of Baptist churches in Eastern Congo. This denomination has been in conflict for the last 21 years. Two main ethnic groups were not able to agree how to share the leadership positions. Then it has been the reason to split for the last 21 years. Those leaders approached CBM and they asked if CBM can approach them, uh, accompany them to work to the unity and the reconciliation and bringing both two groups together to work together, to worship together and living together. So our colleague Gato Munyamasoko, who is a CBM Peace and Reconciliation Specialist for Africa, agreed, accepted with passion to join that denomination. For the last 12 months, Reverend Gato has been training the staff from the office, uh, the executive leaders, uh, the teachers and pastors about the modules 
of peace and reconciliation with very important topics like uh, celebrating our differences, conflict management, repentance, and others. We have been hearing feedback from the leaders and those different uh, groups of trainees get, saying that they are ready to work together, they are ready to come together again, they are ready to work together as a community and witnessing again the unity as a church. There are still work to do, but we see already God is at work convincing those people from different ethnic groups that for the sake of the kingdom, they need to come together to witness that the cross can unite them. The cross can bring them together as they live in Shalom. March and April is the summer holiday of the school and the students went back to um, their hometown In most of them, 50% of the students are back to Myanmar. And then in April come the new school term. Unfortunately, at that time, the pandemic also started. Because of that, the border of Thailand and Myanmar are closed. And so the students are stuck in their hometown and they cannot return to the school to study. A lot of them are located in the mountainous region. In Myanmar. In Myanmar. And they don't have electricity. They don't have stable Wi-Fi internet. So it is really hard for them and they only have a cell phone to go online to study. So it is really hard for them to study. Some students already started thinking they're going to quit this semester and wait until the COVID over and back to school to learn. Well, at that time, we sent out a prayer letter to all the churches in the region and asked them, so pray for us and pray for these uh, students. And most of the church's pastors are, are, are our alumni. So they responded very positively. Yeah, they were saying that, well, why don't you send them to our location? We are in the city. We have stable internet. Mm -hmm. We have electricity. And we can even feed them and let them sleep in our, uh, our, our church so that they have to no worry about uh, studying. It's really people seeing the hope at that time. Though. Yeah, and then we're really thankful that these alumni are willing to step up and help the younger younger students. Mm -hmm. So now they are all located in different locations and then they in the mid-morning they can gather together and learn and go online and they can focus on studying. During this very difficult time, now we can see the God in control. Yeah, we really praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Our God, we thank you for this world which you have created. The world that you love. This world which you have redeemed at great cost through the gift of your Son. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus and the full, abundant, never-ending life that we can experience in him. We thank you, Lord, that you loved the world so much you sent your Son. We acknowledge today that this world is broken and weary under the weight of COVID-19, injustice, poverty, and conflict. We thank you, Lord, that in the midst of this brokenness and weariness, we can rejoice because in Christ, you are making all things new. The light does indeed shine in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. In this world, we will have trouble, but we take heart because you have overcome the world. Today, Lord, we pray for your church, your church here in Canada. May you continue to show each local church how best to reflect the light of Christ in their village, town, or city. Empower us, Lord, and strengthen us by your spirit, we pray. Give us hearts for the poor, the broken, the marginalized, the other. And Lord, what we pray for the church here in Canada, we pray also for the church around the world. We thank you for these exciting stories of hope we've just heard from our global partners. 
Continue to strengthen them and empower them as we walk side by side in partnership. Lord, we thank you that all over the world your gospel is growing and bearing fruit. Lord Jesus, we need you. Fill us anew with your presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray together now, Lord, as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory Thank you again for joining in this service today. Your partnership with CBM is deeply valued, and we look forward to continuing our shared ministry together. And now, brothers and sisters, as God's people, let us go forward not with resignation and despair over the things that have been lost, but with full confidence that God holds the future in His hands and He is faithful in all things. In a world of deep despair and hopelessness, may you go forward rejoicing as God's mission people, bearers of His hope, grace, and peace in the midst of brokenness. Amen. My name is Rohan Stewart, and I am here this morning to encourage you, if you have not yet um, donated to our Grow Hope campaign, which we have partnered with Canadian Baptist Ministries, the Grow Hope campaign um, is for us to raise $5,000.
And uh, to this point, we are $23,000 away from our goal. And I do encourage you to donate if you have not um, donated this time. And I want to also thank the many persons who have contributed and offered their donations um, at this time. This is a, a very important project that we here at Emmanuel Baptist Church is partaking in. And this will help um, a number of persons um, internationally. This program would allow a farmer to provide his land for the purpose to plant and the harvest will be sold and all of that funds for that one acre of land that the farmer will be using will be donating um, to this wonderful Grow Hope um, cause to help persons in Lebanon and other regions um, of the world who are facing with famine, flooding, refugee crisis, just to name a few. The important thing in this project as well um, is for you to know that um, the government of Canada also will be um, multiplying the gift in a ratio of four to one from our given. So this is a wonderful opportunity um, for, for us to be partnering in a situation that will be benefiting many persons in less fortunate circumstances than what we are in here in Canada. So I do strongly encourage you as we have just a few more days remaining before this um, project is closed and we would love to hit our target of $5,000. And just a reminder, we are 2,300 short. So I strongly um, encourage you um, to give to this worthy cause and uh, may the good Lord bless you. Thank you. The benediction today. Isaiah has written, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged their, the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you. Let us go now rejoicing that Jesus was born into our world to be our light, to bring a thrill of hope so our weary world can rejoice. Oh.